Okay. Well, again, thank you for joining me for this information session. Today, we're going to be going over our mission statement accreditation, our pride points, some program outcomes. We're going to be going over the various um, uh tracks and certificate options that we offer. We're gonna go over where we can accept applicants from, tuition and the admissions review. Um, so I'd like to start with our mission statement, nurse leaders begin here. Um, that is something that we truly try to live in every one of our programs. Our mission is to educate nurses at the undergraduate and graduate levels to meet the healthcare needs in Nevada and beyond. The School of Nursing promotes, improves, and sustains human health through evidence-based education and advances in research and practice. Um, and so you'll see in our accreditation statement that our MSN degree has been accredited since 2008 and is accredited through 2024. And our certificates have been accredited since 2017 um, through 2023. Um, that is with the exception of our psych mental health nurse practitioner tracks that are going to be new tracks and new programs. So those will be in the process of undergoing accreditation. Uh, so we have a few pride points that we like to point out. Um, in 2019, the National League for Nursing appointed us as a center of excellence. In 2020, U.S. News World and Report ranked us in the top 100 um, Master of Science uh, in Nursing and Doctor of Nursing Practice programs. And then we did get word that for 2021, they have also ranked us in the top 50 Master of Science in Nursing and Doctor of Nursing Practice programs. And we're also rated number 11 um, in best online master's programs uh, in according to News and World Report for 2020. Um, so I'd like to go over uh, some of the program outcomes. We're going to go over the family nurse practitioner and psychiatric mental nurse, nurse um, practitioner outcomes, which are to completely assess, diagnose, prescribe, evaluate, create a holistic plan of treatment, articulate the professional role, which includes the ethical code of conduct and scope, of advanced practice, develop and monitor comprehensive holistic plans of care that addresses the health promotion and disease prevention needs of diverse client populations, and assess and monitor teaching learning needs in diverse client populations. Practice ethically in the con conduct of research, management, and clinical professional practice. And we also have a uh, nurse educator track, so we'll go over those uh, program outcomes, which are to utilize education research to continually improve teaching strategy skills, develop a teaching learning style that facilitates learning development that meets the educational outcomes of the learner, assess and evaluate at both the course and program level, function as a leader and change agent in nursing education settings, participate in scholarship to further knowledge and abilities in nursing education. Um, so all of our programs and tracks are online and they are asynchronous. Um, so if you're not familiar with asynchronous learning, um, what I usually like to give the example of discussion posts. Discussion posts will typically serve as your participation in the course. Um, so let's say your week begins on a Monday, it ends on a Sunday, and you are um, you have to uh, post your initial response by Wednesday of that week. That means you have from Monday to Wednesday, whatever that hour and minute deadline is, to submit that post. So if you're somebody who likes to work early, you can go ahead and submit that once it opens on Monday. Um, if you're somebody who likes to um, work in the wee hours of the morning, you can certainly go ahead and post at two o'clock in the morning. Again, as long as you're meeting that deadline, um, which would be sometimes it's a uh, Wednesday night at 11.59 p.m. Um, so that's the, the beauty of being an online asynchronous course. You're not sitting at your laptop or computer at three o'clock in the afternoon waiting for a live lecture to happen. You're essentially doing your learning at your own pace, um, but again, within the deadlines that are prescribed for you um, by your instructor. Uh, we do offer three MSN track options and three postmaster certificate options that we'll go over in just a moment. Uh, we're, minute, we're located just minutes away from McCarran International Airport, um, and we're about 15 to 20 minutes away from the uh, Clinical Simulation Center, which is where um, many of our um, nurse practitioner students will spend time when they're required to come on campus. There are mandatory trips to campus. Um, one of them is our School of Nursing graduate orientation. Um, this orientation is different than the orientation that the grad college holds. Um, and this one is usually a two-day event, all day, both days. Um, if I'm correct, it will be on August 4 and 5. That should be a Wednesday and a Thursday. And what's nice about that is if you're coming out of town, you can um, extend your stay by a day or by the weekend and enjoy uh, Las Vegas and, and the Strip as well. 
Um, you'll see that the MSN FNP program does have seven trips to campus. That seven does include um, mandatory orientation. So um, six true trips to campus from start of the program to end of the program. And for the psych mental health nurse practitioner track, we're in the process of uh, finalizing exactly how many trips to campus will be required, but you're looking at about seven to eight visits similar to the FNP program. And we'll have those um, uh, readily uh, confirmed before we go ahead and do our offer of admissions. Um, for our nurse educator tracks, whether you're in the Master's of Science in Nursing program or in the Postmaster's Certification program, there are three trips to campus. And then um, you'll notice that we have two psych mental health nurse practitioner um, certificates listed, and we'll go over those in detail to kind of differentiate them. Um, but we're looking at an estimated five trips per, um, uh, for both certificates. And so everybody who's in our MSN program, whether you're a nurse educator, family nurse practitioner, psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, you're taking the same core 18 credits. Um, they're not necessarily taken in this order, um, but you get an idea of the courses that everybody can expect to take. And then we have our nurse educator um, specific courses. So these are 14 um, uh, credits that are specific to the nurse educator, 33 credits in total um, when you're looking at the core courses and the nursing specific courses. And we do have some plans of study to kind of give you an idea of what your next um, year or two would look like. Um, so this program does admit uh, once, once a year in the fall. So you're looking at a fall 2021 start. You're looking at completing the program in three semesters at full-time study. So that's summer 2022. That's about early to mid-August graduation. And if you're in the part-time track option, you're looking at six semesters um, with a, a summer 2023 graduation, so extended by a year if you're in the part-time track. We do operate on trimesters, and those are 15 weeks for each trimester with two weeks break in between. And that helps us get you in and out as soon as we can, um, whether you're in the full-time or in the part-time option. And then we do have the family nurse practitioner track uh, courses, and you'll see that there's 27 um, specific uh, credits related to this um, plan of study, uh, 46 credits in total. Um, we have 675 clinical hours um, and our trips to campus. And you can kind of see, again, the courses aren't necessarily in this order, but our next slide will kind of give you an idea of when those courses will be taken. And so at full-time study, you're looking at four semesters, you're averaging about nine credits. You could look at um, having 12 credits each semester. So those are kind of heavy semesters and you can see where the um, clinical components are listed uh, with a fall 2022 graduation. And if you are in the part-time option, um, you're looking at a fall 2023 graduation rate. Um, and so usually at this time, this is a, the um, uh, track that I usually get the most questions about. Uh, can I start full time and go part time? Can I do the reverse? And what I would recommend is definitely taking the time to think about what will work best with your current schedule. So um, will your employers be flexible with you? Is something that you want to consider and you want to look at the other aspects of your um, of your life? Who, who, do you have dependents that you have to take care of? Do you have other responsibilities? And how does that affect your ability to be in a full-time or part-time track? What I will say is that if you start full-time and you find that you um, can't handle the full-time or the full-time just doesn't work out with your schedule anymore and you need to drop down to part-time, um, you'll work with our student services um, director to kind of see what that new part-time schedule will look like. It won't necessarily look exactly like the part-time option we have on the screen, depending on where you're um, making that request, but we will get you um, as close to part-time with um, uh, an ideal, the, the next ideal graduation rate that we can get you at. If you're starting off at part-time and then you're interested in uh, going full-time, that may not necessarily be um, possible as far as trying to increase your rate to graduation, but what we can look to see to do is can we um, maybe try to get you into more courses in the first spring semester as opposed to the last spring semester to try to lighten up your course load as you progress through the program. And then our psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner courses, same thing, 46 credits, um, fewer clinical hours, and the same required trips to campus. 
And so these are some sample plans of study for the Psych Mental Health Nurse Practitioner courses. Um, there may be some changes um, to the breakdown of the courses when you are actually enrolled in the program. We're currently working on making some updates. Um, we're not planning to increase any credits at this time, so it will still be 46 credits. It just may look slightly different than what you're seeing right now. Um, but same thing, graduation at full time is four semesters or seven semesters at part time. And then we have our postmaster certificates in nursing education, and that's a fall start program as well. It is 12 credits, um, and we do, uh, I'll have a plan of study for you in just a moment, so that is three semesters. And then we have our psych mental health nurse practitioner with a fall start, and this one is 28 credits. So this is for the individual who is not an FNP, who's not um, an advanced practice nurse at all, who's looking to get into psych mental health nurse practitioner. This would be the certificate for you if you already hold a master's degree. And if you are a family nurse practitioner already, then you would um, be looking at the um, right hand side of the screen where the 21 credit psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner certificate programs listed. And you see it kind of just dives in right into the theory and clinical components of psychiatric mental health. Um, so that one does have a spring start. The applications are not yet open, but we'll go over when they will open in just a moment. And do take note that if your graduate education currently doesn't demonstrate the three P's, so that's advanced pathophysiology, advanced pharmacology, and advanced physical assessment, that that's something that would need to be built into your plan of study. And those are three credits each, so a total of nine credits. Um, and that's something we'll, when we're um, when the admissions co uh, committee is making the decisions, they'll make note of that. And that's something that will be in your official offer of admissions through Grad Rebel Gateway. It will be listed as um, uh, a provision of your admission so that when you're making your admissions decision, um, you're making it knowing that you have those additional um, uh, nine credits to take. Okay, and then uh, same thing, just like before, those samples of one um, each course is taken. So psychiatric mental health for the FNP is a um, uh, spring, summer, and fall graduation. The regular psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner just starts in the fall, but still has the same graduation rate or graduation time as the FNP certificate. And then we have our nurse educator, which is three semesters with a summer 2022 graduation. So some important information I do want to go over. Um, if you're offered admissions, you must enroll for that term that you're admitted for. So if you're applying for fall 2021 and you're admitted fall 2021, you must enroll in that semester. Um, of course, life happens. And if you find that starting um, in fall 2021 just won't work, um, you would have to reapply in the future. So applying for fall 2022 resubmitting documents, updating any of those documents, and going through the review process all over again. So, so um, admissions would not be guaranteed at that point, but um, we still would consider you just as we did the first time. We also don't allow transferring of tracks. Um, so if you start out in the um, Master's of Science in Nursing Family Nurse Practitioner track and you find that um, psych mental health is more, more of your um, speed, then um, we ask you to first consider that very carefully because just because you were offered admissions into one track doesn't mean that we can just move you over into another track. Um, we look at the components that make up your application and they should speak to the track that you're applying for, which is why we can't do that seamless transition. If you're really contemplating that, um, you would have to apply to that track and go under the review process just like you did the first time around. Um, and uh, admissions into that track wouldn't be guaranteed. But what I can say is that's why we do offer those two um, psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner um, certificate options for you so that if you do want to kind of keep your scope a little broad at first and start out with the Master of Science in Family Nurse Practitioner, you can, you get certified. And then you can apply to that psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner for the FNP, which is that 21 credit certificate. So you do have that option. Right now, we don't have the reverse available. So if you start out in psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner and you finish that program, we're currently eliminating our um, uh, postmaster certificate in family nurse practitioner. So just know that the reverse is not available at this time. Um, and I wanted to provide some information about non-degree seeking students. I know some of you have already been on our website looking at admissions criteria, looking um, and found some information about courses that you can take as a non-degree seeking student. We do have nine credits that you can take as a non-degree seeking student. Taking any of these credits does not guarantee admissions. 
Um, and it's also important to note that these courses are only offered um, once a year. And that goes for all of our graduate courses. They're only offered once a year. So um, we do have a wait list for all of these, um, these three courses available. So that's for advanced uh, pathophysiology, health and public policy for the advanced practice of nursing and advanced pharmacology. Um, we're moving in a direction because these courses tend to get um, become so in demand that um, we are opening the waitlist a little later. So they'll be opened the semester prior. So right now um, we are we are taking individuals on the waitlist for Nurse Seven Nineteen R because we're in the transition of um, opening those waitlists only a semester prior. Um, but if you're interested in taking Nurse Seven O Four that wait list would open in uh, on May 1st. So it always open on um, semester prior. Um, again, taking these courses does not guarantee admissions. Um, and so one of the uh, questions I get is, so what are the benefits of taking these non-degree seeking uh, courses? Uh, so if this is your first time taking a graduate level course, this is a great time to kind of, you know, take one course at a time get acquainted with graduate education, get acquainted with um, online education or education at UNLV School of Nursing if you um, haven't attended here before. So it, it's, it's good to just um, see how we operate. Um, it also helps to not necessarily help you graduate sooner because again, these courses are offered in given semesters, um, but they help to lighten that load of the semester, which is always welcomed, especially when you're getting closer to your um, clinicals um, and you may be working and you may have all these other responsibilities. So of course, having a lighter course load, whether you're a full-time or part-time student would also always be welcomed. Um, and I, do you also want to note that um, for uh, Nurse 704, it is a prerequisite course for Nurse 730. So if you don't take Nurse 704 or if you don't, um, if you end up withdrawing from it, you wouldn't be able to take Nurse 730. And also note that you do need a, a grade of B or better in any of these courses, but especially in 704 if you're trying to take uh, Nurse 730 as a non-degree seeking student. Um, we don't combine, uh, we don't allow combination of non-degree seeking credits with transfer credits. And I do want to talk about transfer credits for just a moment. Um, we don't uh, consider transfer credits that were earned in another degree or certificate. We consider that double dipping, which is why we don't allow it. Um, but we can consider up to six credits for transfer if they were not earned towards a degree or certificate. So maybe you started in a, a degree or certificate and didn't finish it. Um, you may identify courses that you took that kind of match our curriculum. And if that's the case, you uh, provide us with, with a copy of the syllabus or the syllabi and we'll review them and we'll see if they're transferable. Um, you may find that we can't transfer any credits, but then you want to take non-degree seeking credits. Um, that's something we can do. We just put you on a wait list and then we see if we can um, get you into the course. We do fill the courses with our matriculated students first because um, uh, these courses are built into the plan of study. Um, so space is never guaranteed as well as um, it doesn't guarantee admissions. Uh, so for fall 2021, this is really important. We're limited in where we can accept applicants from because um, these are programs that lead to licensure or they have some sort of practicum component. Um, so for fall 2021 and only applicable for fall 2021 as of right now, we're looking at admitting from Nevada, Arizona, uh, Nevada, Utah, uh, Alaska, Oklahoma, North Carolina, and Montana. So only these states for fall 2021 entry. If you're considering the postmaster certificate in psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner for the FNP, which has a spring application and a spring start, right now we're waiting to see if we can add any states to this list. But for fall 2021, we're sticking to these six states. Um, we do hope in future um, application cycles um, that we can add states to this. But right now, just know for fall 2021, these are the states that we're looking at. And I do want to talk a little bit about um, tuition information. I know that's usually a hot topic when we're talking about programs and what do they cost. Um, so the link right up at the top is the link to where you can go to UNLV's tuition um, calculator to do some estimates. 
Um, so when you go onto the website, you're going to see this, this top box. So you're going to see half of that, and there's going to be advanced options. You're going to click on that so that you see all of these um, options below regarding credits. You want to make sure that you're changing the student type to graduate, that you're selecting if you're a resident or a non-resident, and then there are three places where you want to make sure that you have your total credits that you're trying to calculate um, matching. So your total credits need to be selected, your online credits need to be selected, and this NERSS 500 to 700 also need to um, be selected and match the other credit loads. So this 500 to 700 credit selection represents our differential tuition that's charged per credit, and that's noted um, in both of these samples as $239.50 per credit. So just make sure you have that. For online credits, um, you want to make sure that you're selecting the appropriate amount of credits that you're trying to calculate, because if you're a resident and you don't select that, then you're going to lowball your tuition estimate. You're going to see over here, it's $34 per credit. So if you don't select it, it's not going to be listed here, and you're going to get a lower tuition estimate. Now, if you're a non-resident and you select it no to resident and you don't select the online credits, you're going to see a significantly higher um, uh fee for both. Um, you're going to not see online fees, so you're not going to see that $34 um, per credit. And in the non-resident fee, you're actually going to see a significantly higher fee there, um, which you don't want. So being in an online program as a non-resident student, you do get a significantly reduced non-resident fee, which is nice. One thing that's not noted when you're doing the um, the tuition estimate or when you're looking at my screen right now is that this non-resident fee is actually per credit. So 148.75 per credit. So just keep that in mind. It's not a flat fee. Okay. And just because I know we're kind of getting an idea, um, you know, what does, the, what in general will a program cost? So here are some tuition estimates. All figures are based upon the 2021 um, tuition uh, estimates by ENCHI using the tuition calculator. And so you can definitely do these. Um, our plans of study that you saw in my previous slides are not on the website, but if you're interested, we'll have contact information later on. I can certainly send you the um, uh, plans of study that you're looking for. You just let me know if you want FNP or if you want nurse educator, if you want full-time or part-time. I can provide that to you along with some detailed instructions so that you can do um, tuition estimates by the semester so that you get an idea of what you would be responsible to pay. In general, again, if you're uh, coming in as a part-time student, we try to keep you at an average of six credits. If you're a full-time student, you're at an average of nine, um, but it will vary between semesters. And uh, so for fall 2021, um, our applications that are open are all of our MSN tracks, so all three, that's nurse educator, FNP, um, and psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, as well as two of our postmaster certificates, that's in nurse, uh, nursing education, and the postmaster certificate in psych mental health nurse practitioner, that's the 28 credit for the non-FNP individual. Applications opened on October 1st, and they close on February 1st of 2021. Now that is a hard deadline. Your application by February 1st has to be submitted and the non-refundable fee has to be received by the grad college, um, which you do online through the application. Um, what I do recommend is if you are already if you already have an idea and you know that you're going to move forward with an application, try not to wait until this deadline to submit it. Because once you have a submitted application on file, um, I begin reaching out to you, letting you know where you currently stand with your application. I let you know if you're missing anything or if it's complete. And so you definitely want to have that information sooner rather than later. Um, and then for the spring application for the um, uh, postmaster certificate in psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner for the FMP, you'll see that application opens on February 1st and closes on July 1st for the following spring, um, which would be early January of 2022. And so I do want to talk a little bit about the uh, application process. So you're using this link to visit the Graduate College's website um, to complete the application. So if you haven't already uh, started a Grad Rebel Gateway account, 
um, you'll go ahead and create an account first, or you'll go ahead and log into it. And so the grad college, I like to think of them as uh, the parent and the school of nursing is the child in that um, you have to meet the grad college's minimum admission requirements before the school of nursing is allowed to review your application. Um, so they're looking for, did you submit the application and pay the non-refundable fee? Did you submit your transcripts from all institutions previously attended? And do you meet their minimum GPA requirement? And what I can tell you about GPA is um, if you meet our GPA requirement, you certainly meet theirs. Theirs is going to be um, a little lower than our requirement. And um, I do wanna also talk about transcripts because this tends to be the, the um, make or break point when, when the grad college is reviewing your applications. Um, if you list three institutions that you've attended between your undergraduate and graduate education. Um, you need to have three sets of transcripts for that. So if you submit, if you indicate that you have three institutions that you've attended, but you only give us two sets of transcripts, the grad college is gonna say your application's incomplete. Now, if you list three institutions and you provide three transcripts, the grad college will review those. If they end up finding a fourth institution that you didn't list on the application, they're gonna consider that incomplete. So just make sure that you have all transcripts for all institutions that you've attended. Um, and if you have any education from outside of the United States, we don't necessarily need the transcripts from outside of the United States, but we do need you to have a foreign credential evaluation. Um, and we only accept certain agencies' um, evaluations. Um, you can visit nasis.org, that's N as in Nancy, A C E S dot org, to do a course by course evaluation for all education, whether undergraduate or graduate. And so at a glance, here are the admission requirements. So you need to have three letters of professional recommendation, a current resume. In that resume, you want to make sure that you um, it's up to date. If you're part of any agencies, you want to make sure that you um, list those agencies or organizations. If you've published anything, all of that information that's relevant to um, your application, you want to make sure is on your resume. Um, a statement of intent, and we'll go over those in just a moment. A minimum of a GP, uh, 3.0 GPA in your BSN education, a current unrestricted RN license, uh, your pre-recorded interview. Uh, you must have practiced as a BSN prepared nurse for a minimum of 2,000 hours. So if you're working full time, uh, that would be about a year. And we already spoke about transcripts and you have the website listed there as well to um, where you can look at the foreign credential evaluation agencies and they have about 12 to 15 agencies that you can choose from. All are okay as long as they're listed on the website. And okay. So your personal statement. Uh, you want to make sure that you're preparing something thoughtful and something strong that can really speak to your professional goals and why you're seeking that degree or that um, postmaster certificate. And you're um, looking why are you why do you want this graduate edu education? Why do you why are you choosing UNLV School of Nursing? We want to hear about that. Um, but also be mindful of your editing and grammar because um, we're not just looking at why you're choosing this, uh, why these are your career goals, why you're choosing UNLV, but we're looking at your writing because this is a graduate program, right? So um, be mindful of your grammar, your editing, your spelling, um, and just review it before you go ahead and submit it. We're also looking for three letters of recommendation. I, I previously mentioned that. We're looking for current or former supervisors within the nursing, um, your nursing career or a former faculty member from your um, BSN education. Um, ideally, somewhere, uh, if you're looking at one of the formers, whether former faculty or former supervisor, you want to try to keep it within five years. Um, we definitely uh, don't want to see a um, recommendation from a faculty member you had in your BSN program from uh, 20 years ago if you've had no communication with them professionally since. Um, so definitely try to make sure you choose those professional recommend recommenders. We don't want to see your neighbor recommending you. We don't want to see um, your employer from your first job as a barista. Um, we don't want it from your partner or your spouse. We really want to see a professional reference. But when you're approaching these prof uh, professional references, you also want to have a conversation beforehand with them and let them know what we're, we want to see. We want to hear what they think about your ability to be in a graduate program or to um, seek a career as a faculty member or to be a nurse practitioner. Um, 
sometimes we get the professional recommender, but then they say, this person's great. They're always willing to help out. They like to go hiking on the weekends. And that's great, but it doesn't tell us about your ability to be in a program or um, how that relates to your future career goals. So have a conversation with them, making sure that you're choosing someone that you trust to write a sound recommendation. And then the online recorded video interview. Within um, about 24 hours of paying your non-refundable application fee um, and submitting your application, you're going to get an invitation from Kira Talent inviting you to conduct your interview. I do recommend um, keeping an eye on your junk and spam mail because on occasion it does end up in there. Um, but if 24 hours pass and you haven't received it yet, you just reach out to us and we'll push another invitation out to you so that you can get this completed. There are several prompts that are randomized um, and you won't know what those prompts are until you're um, ready to record your responses. These, um, each response is going to be timed and you'll be able to see at the bottom when it starts um, how much time you have. So just make sure that you are sticking within um, the confines of the time that you're allowed allotted. Um, re recording no response is a response. That's what's going to be captured if you um, don't respond to the prompt. Um, and if you get cut off because your explanation or your response was over the time limit, limit that is also what's recorded. Um, so try to be mindful of that time constraint Whatever is submitted is your submission, and that's what will be reviewed by the um, admissions committee. And you're only allowed one submission, so we don't allow any reviews. And um, some information, uh, if you want to contact us, you can reach me at gradnursingadmissions at unlv.edu. This is also on our MSN degrees webpage all the way at the bottom, if, in case you lose it, um, our link to our website and the link to the graduate college where you'll do the application. You can also easily um, uh, Google uh, UNLV grad college application and it'll provide the link, or you can all 